Hey folks, I'm Grimwit from NatchEvil.com and this is Natchian News. I have to speak quickly before the moments of lucid thought leave me again. The insomnia is neither getting better nor worse, but focus is worsening. I'm finding it more and more difficult to do things like write, draw, or think, but I try anyway. Apparently stress in my life manifests as crippling insomnia, and before you ask, no, that doesn't mean I have more time to work on things. All it means is I have a harder time to remember, I have a harder time remembering things, focusing, and something. I don't know, the lucidity is wearing off again. I've been keeping myself somewhat sane by playing video games. That's why I've been doing the Let's Insomnia series, which reminds me, fuck Google+. Plus. Okay, here's the deal. In about a week or so, YouTube will be changing their format to I don't know what. They might even uh, eliminate my channel for copyright infringement. I don't know. They want everyone and everything who touches YouTube to be on Google+. Plus. No, this isn't going away. Because from Google's point of view, it's a matter of consolidation. Why have a separate commenting system when they could be using one thing? So yeah, if you want to comment on YouTube, be prepared to join Google+, like the rest of us. The problem isn't Google+, really, it's how they're doing it. They're doing it totally wrong. Usually, Google is pretty savvy with these things, but for some reason, they're brute forcing the issue of commenting formats on YouTube. What they should have done is tell everyone ahead of time, instead of just changing it, without anybody knowing. They could have told us why they were changing it, or prepared YouTubers in general that it was changing. Bad form, Google+. Plus. Whoever's in charge of your PR, you guys need to rethink this. And now, the one thing I love most about my viewers, the comments, is completely busted, and no one's going to mess with it anymore. Not that I matter, but it's the principle of the thing. What was I saying? Uh, no guest voice this week. Also, there will be only two episodes left after this. If I get a narrator to take over, we'll return in January for season two. But just a warning, two episodes after this. So, let's tune in. Whirlsend Gate, Episode 16, Home, by Mike Rojas, August 1921, Ravenlove Street. More tea? asked David Mitch Marshall, turning down the flame under the kettle. His wife, Dinah, shook her head. Outside the window, the blue sky compelled tweeting birds to dance from tree to tree. They moved like happy schools of fish, clouding the air and landing again. David Mitch Marshall smiled at them and waved before sitting down at the dining table with his wife. You know, darling, it really is a wonderful morning. How about a picnic? I know. We can look into that wonderful hill Melody showed me. It's quite perfect. Dinah shook her head again, taking time to stir in a cube of sugar into her teacup and sipping it. You're quite right. We needn't be in in such a hurry. The dining chair was exceedingly comfortable when David sat. The sweet smell of jasmine tea in his china glass creased close the ache in his heart, and he sighed with content. This hotel room seemed to resemble David's kitchen back in New York State. The wallpaper he and his wife helped put up was pleasantly yellow and white. He had fond memories of how Dinah got glue paste on her nose. There was something else, too. Something about a hotel room? David shrugged it off and sipped his tea. It was raspberry, though he thought he poured jasmine. A simple mistake, of course. He smiled to his wife across the table, and she smiled back. You know, darling, I can't think of any other place I'd rather be than with you here in the living room. And what a living room. The couch David sat on was ruby red velvet, set on the polished wood floor. They got the couch as a wedding gift from Dinah's father. The floor was laid down by David's brother, and David himself helped cut the planks of wood. David looked again, and it was the kitchen once more. That's strange. Isn't it, though? said the smiling shadow behind David. 
David ignored it. Well, it's just my imagination. More tea? asked David Mitch Marshall, turning down the flame under the kettle. His wife, Dinah, shook her head. Outside the window, the blue sky compelled tweeting birds to dance from tree to tree. They moved like happy schools of fish. Bam! 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 There was a sudden shock as someone pounded on David's front door. Who in blazes could that be? He stood up from the couch. Or had it been a dining chair? I'll, uh, I'll g g get it, darling. No need for you to. Dinah stood up quickly and put her hands on David's shoulder, gently easing him back down onto the couch. Without a word, she marched up to the front door to peer through the peephole. When she turned again to David, Dinah shrugged as if to indicate no one had been on the other side. How odd, David said. It's probably some kids trying to scare us. I'll have a word with them. David got up again, but he was in the kitchen, turning the flame down under the kettle. I'll just... Huh. More tea? His wife, Dinah, shook her head. Outside the window, the blue sky compelled tweeting birds to dance from tree to tree. They moved like, bam, bam, bam! David, you in there? yelled a voice from the other side of the door. Something about a hotel room. Wait, why would David have gone to a hotel when his bedroom was so perfect already? He sat in bed, the lamp burning next to him giving that familiar scent of heat while he read. Next to him, bundled up and breathing silently asleep, was his wife. David smiled at her unconscious body. No strangle marks, no bloodshot eyes. Why would he think such a thing? He turned back to his book and read aloud to her, nodding off just slightly on his own. The story was about a haunted town at the end of the world, but nothing like that could exist, not even in Knox's state. They were silly thoughts. Muddled voices pricked through the bedroom door. Right. On three. One. Two. Bam! went the sound of a thousand hammers striking the door all at once. David jumped off the couch. Those are no children. What in heaven's name is happening? Dinah walked out of the kitchen to check on the peephole of the front door. One, two, bam! It was an explosion startling the birds outside, an assault on David's household that nearly broke the deadbolt from its place. David turned off the flame under the heavy iron kettle, then readied it like a flail. Step away from the door, Dinah. I'll handle this. Dinah held up her hands and shook her head. Dinah, who knows what's on the other side of that door? This is my house. I'll handle this. Again, Dinah would not move. D -d 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 Damn it, Dinah! Get her out of the way, the smiling shadow said. She might get hurt. David did as he was told and shoved Dinah to one side. She got back up and wrapped her arms around him. It didn't feel like she was trying to stop him, more like trying to hold him one last time. Move her! She'll get hurt! the smiling shadow said. Hit her. Maybe she'll learn. David didn't think about it. With one hand, he pushed her away, and with the kettle, he struck her on the head. Dinah spun backwards and crumpled under the kitchen chair. Without checking her, David walked right up to the front door, unbolted the lock, and flung it open, screaming, What is it? Two men one in disheveled dress and the other's white suit in perfect order, stood in the hallway of the wordless hotel. The messy one David squinted at and asked, Aren't you J J John Davis? Grab him, John said to Trevor. The two men took an arm each and pulled David out of room 308. What? What's happening? David looked around in distress. I should have boarded up this room long ago, John said. Damn it, Trevor! Trevor was unmoved, his eyes locked on David. I simply wanted to see what would happen. None of this made sense to David. He looked through what was once his front door. Inside was a simple bed, table, and lamp, all sepia with age. W where am I? he asked, checking his hand for a kettle he once held. I, d I d d don't understand. No one answered him. John was locking the door and yelling something at Trevor about putting people in danger. David Mitch Marshall looked at his smiling shadow. D David Rich Marshall, what happened? We need to get back in there, said the shadow. Yes, y yes we do. David looked at his hands again. 
There was nothing in them, and that would have to do. John never saw it coming. David's fist struck like thunder to the back of John's head, and the second strike knocked him out. "'What are you doing?' Trevor asked. It was a calm question. "'Nothing important,' said David, searching for the key to room 308. He knew he saw John Davis with it a second ago. "'It seems important. I suppose you want to go back into that place.' "'It's m m my home.' David took a good look at Trevor as if for the first time. Y "'You're Trevor Clever, right?' "'Yes.' And I don't think you will be going back into that room, Mr. Marshall. David threw up his hands to protect his face, but it didn't help. Trevor moved and felt like an out-of-control truck that kept slamming into David over and over again. When David Mitch Marshall woke up at the clinic the next morning, he would once more miss his wife. If you like Whirlson Gate or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or whatever. Also, there's a link in the doodly-doo if you're kind enough to donate to the cause. Every dollar will... Uh... Something about a hotel? Where am I? Music was unknowingly provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Seriously, check him out. He's offering royalty-free music for use of projects like this on YouTube. And, as you've already heard, it's all awesome. 1920s jazz music was provided by archive.org. Check the description for both Archive and Kevin McLeod's website. Today's noun was Trevor. Look, just contact me telling me your favorite person, place, or thing, and I'll include it in the next episode. My email is natchevil at gmail.com. Like most nobodies on YouTube, I'm so very lonely. Hello? Is someone out there? Have nothing but fun, YouTube. I, uh...